Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Walking in Her Shoes with my beautiful co-host, Makira. How are you? I'm good, Doc. How are you doing today? I am doing absolutely fantastic. You know, after our last episode, we had such an amazing response and ladies really want to know more and be introduced to their, uh, what, what do we call it? You, you call it the VP, right? The VP, yes. So <laughs> we, they want to understand more about it. And this is, I'm so glad that we are actually bringing value into so many people's lives. And so, um, before we get started, everybody, don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. And I promise if you stay to the end, you're going to pick up some nuggets because as our conversations unfold, there is information. I mean, we had no clue that at the end of our session, or not session, but at the end of our time uh, last week, we were going to talk about soap and that soap was going to be such a, a interesting topic. And I have to share this. I, you know, I considered it because I, I'm, I'm open and I'm, you know, I like to try different things, but I promise you, it may have been a mental block, but I couldn't get over not having such. So I just couldn't get over it. <laughs> oh goodness. I, I had the same experience doc. I was showering, cleaning myself, taking care of that hygiene as we should. And I thought about, it, I was like, yeah, I don't think I could do this part. <laughs> this is something I'm really going to have to work myself into. <laughs> Absolutely. Ladies, and if you don't know what we're talking about, you're going to have to go back to last week's episode <laughs> when we talked about, we're actually walking through, uh, the, the book is called Queen V, and it is written by Dr. Jackie Walters. And I'm yes. telling you, it's been so fantastic thus far. We, we learned about, you know, uh, possibly not using soap when we cleanse our personal part um, or our flower as she as she refers to it but there was one other thing and this is just a little short recap before we get into today's uh, introduction of it all I could not get with the pat you couldn't get with the pat I couldn't get with the pat I was like wow we are such creatures of habit because I mean, I was like, I'm going to injure myself if I pat any harder, so I got to just stop it. <laughs> I was able to get with the pat. I was Were able you? to get the pat. I like the pat, actually. Really? I, like pat. I do. Okay. I do like the pat. It's it's very, um, it's not so harsh and invasive to me, the pat is, you know? Well, I'm like, going to go back and I'm going to try it again. I'm going to yeah, try it again. I think they call it, they say I'm rugged. So, I mean, feminine, but rugged. So, <laughs> so I'm going to try the pat, ladies. You all try the pat, you know, we have, pat. To, we have to step outside of our comfort zone sometimes. So yeah. what are we going to, what are we going to dive into today? Well, today I'm going to take us back to the beginning of the book and we're going to go all the way to the very beginning, the introduction, and we're going to learn about the VP, what the actual VP is. The VP is our vaginal personality, and she breaks those personalities down into one, two, three, four, five vaginal personalities. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Five. This is going to be interesting. Ladies, I hope you got your pens and your paper. I have my pen and my paper. <laughs> and wait to, please wait to the end. because. <laughs> <laughs> Because these different personalities really they interest they help us define our our level like how we feel about sex intimacy and taking care of our bodies and so it's pretty interesting how she how she labels each one. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm sitting back. Them. I'm gonna read them. Because I think reading the whole passage about each one is kind of funny how she how she illustrates them. And you can literally like visualize this person. You probably be like, yeah, that's such and such. And that is such and such. Or I'm like that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So the folks in my circle, ladies, you're not safe. I'm about to identify you. No. <laughs> this is pretty interesting. Very, All right. Very interesting. We ready? Okay. I'm ready. Okay. All right. So we're going to start off with the Virgin Mary. <laughs> Who do you think the Virgin Mary might be, Doc? The Virgin Mary. 
I, I I'm thinking, you know, for for that, it, I don't know if this is good or not, but <laughs> um, <laughs> like like Pritzy, like uh, like like uh, what do you call it? Um, close down, not you know, no no touchable, no nothing. It's just mine, 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 mine. Close it down. <laughs> Am I right? You're pretty close. Yes, okay. you are absolutely very, very close. This that is definitely the conservative woman. You are absolutely okay. yes. You are. You're on it. Okay. It says this is the conservative, contentious, quiet woman. She says, "What if Mick? What Mick? Excuse me. What Nicki Minaj does in the daylight makes you blush. So imagining what goes on behind her closed doors in the dark would likely have you full on fainting." <laughs> While you don't have a lot of experience when it comes to sexual relationships, that means you don't waste a single second worrying about getting a sexually transmitted infection either. Okay. So these are our ladies that are inex inexperienced when it comes to their sex life. And they're probably pretty healthy too. Mm. Yeah. They said friends and families might call you shy or an introvert. Um, your trepidation around sex could be due to your upbringing. It's a, really probably how you were raised or maybe that you had a bad sexual experience. Okay. It says there are often times when you consider breaking out of your shell, but you're also very comfortable in it. So even the strongest waves of fear of missing out can't catapult you out of your safe place, but you can't help but wonder often if you're truly living your best sex life mm, okay I these see are that. probably women too that probably has never grabbed the mirror to even look down below to see what your flower look like wow so, uh, and that's just so true we talked about that on the last episode you must 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 just for the ladies that are just tuning in for the first time you must 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 examine yourself you need to be yeah. you need to know your body and know what it looks like know what it feels like I've, I've had conversations with some ladies that are like they don't they have never like other than bathing touched themselves or you know just like you need to know i mean you know how oh. can we have our i want to say and no judgment but how can we have our our best um sex life if we can't you know know what it's like and then instruct our partners to, right you know, exactly so. right exactly yes ma'am yeah. okay you ready to move on to the next one you said virgin mary so i was being really nice <laughs> <laughs> sometimes a chameleon i'll take on the attributes of those around me or suggested behavior so have to be careful with that okay go ahead i'm gonna I'm... get more interesting as we move along uh-oh so this one is kind of um interesting to me it's called the sanctified snatch the sanctified snatch the sanctified snatch she says okay so you'll know you've landed in the right category if the name of this personality type ruffled each and every one of your feathers so if this ruffled your feathers this is probably you <laughs> <laughs> but i need you to shake it off as a former sanctified sanctified snatch i know this vp intimately so trust me you're going to want to keep reading is what she says this person is a vp is kind-hearted reserved possibly religious would describe you to a T. Chances are you've been called a prim and proper before, but it doesn't matter. You know exactly who you are, a woman with strong boundaries, strong beliefs, and strong faith. It's nobody's business whether or not you need to clean up after sex. You sometimes wonder though, if you're keeping your partner in line or if you might be boring him. You may not be as familiar with your body as other personality types. That makes communicating what you like to a partner or explain to a gyno or a gyno, I mean, sorry, a gyno, gynecologist, what's wrong, very hard. So communication for you is gonna be very difficult as far as what you like or what's going on with your body. But as you learn more about yourself in these pages, Miss Goody Goody, you might undergo a bit of a transformation. So I have a question. 
<laughs> hmm You have a split personality. <laughs> well, she does get into that. She does talk about that later on. I'm she always getting in trouble. I'm always getting in trouble going on ahead with myself. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> she does okay. talk about that. Uh so, oh, okay. We'll introduce them first. But okay. she does talk about that. Okay. Okay. Next is the Coochie Chondriac. Okay. <laughs> now our author, our author, she is definitely a doctor, and so she's a gynecologist. So she says, I see you at my practice all the time. Girl, I said all the time. That's because worry is your middle name. Whether you've been misinformed by someone, scarred by an experience with a partner, or getting too little, too freaky, too frequently with others. I'm not, excuse me, let me reread that. Or getting a little too freaky with too frequently with others. That's almost a tongue twister. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. You're more anxious about the state of your V than the president is about the state of the union. Attentive to details, focused on health, and slightly self-conscious are the hallmarks of a coochie country act. That combination can add up to some low-level anxiety or so anytime you notice a change in your discharge, your period's a day late, you feel a quiver in your belly, you're booking an appointment with your gynecologist. If your V could talk, it's wish for you would be the same as mine. Peace of mind. <laughs> if you're constantly worried about what's happening to your vagina, you're stealing so much joy from your relationships. Instead of relaxing with a partner, you might be constantly suspicious of them. Instead of feeling free during sex, you might be feeling fearful. So basically, she's saying, Coochie Chondriax, chill, relax, enjoy yourselves, enjoy your partner, enjoy your vagina. <laughs> <laughs> get to know yourself a little bit better <laughs> it's a gift ladies <laughs> yes. power of femininity when they slapped you on the bottom at at birth and said it's a girl that was a gift so we that have to see gift. it as a gift man okay <laughs> yes all righty well i don't really have anything to say about her <laughs> <laughs> Other than just maybe learn to meditate, my dear. Learn to yes. meditate, my dear. Try to meditate. It's funny you say that because that will come up later on in the book soon. <laughs> this chapter. Okay. Next is Mary Jane. She says, I could spot a Mary Jane a mile away because, well, Dame recognizes Dame, and I'm definitely an MJ. We're dependable, classy, idealistic. There are a lot of us out there. It's one of the most common VPs I see. So we truly are your average girl. In relationships, MJs don't bring a lot of drama, but they also don't usually open a door to a lot of excitement. We're a couple of vanilla, not three scoops of Rocky Road in a cone. <laughs> if your partner is looking for adventure, they should be aware that there's a roadblock here. So they should be like, uh-uh, all that? Yeah. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> If they're looking for stability, security, and safety, jackpot, they just hit the mega millions. That's what we're willing to provide because it's also what we crave. The trouble is sometimes that stability leads to a partner losing interest. Actually, can we be real? Sometimes that stability leads you to losing interest. Mm. Your friends probably call you a great girl, a good catch, and you definitely feel that way. You've got good intuition, you're honest, and perceptive but you're also wondering if there's more to explore when it comes to your sexuality and chances are there is so you know how we how we always say but well, what's in it for me i'm like well where am i <laughs> <laughs> okay hmm. Yeah, don't have too much to say about Mary Jane. I love don't her have stability. Too much to say about Mary, yeah, she's um, all about stability. No drama, which is good. Average, I don't know about. Well, it's not a good or a bad. It's chocolate or vanilla, but in okay. No, I have too much to say about Mary Jane. Either. It's like okay, it's like, okay, yeah, yep. okay, mm -hmm. okay. Cool beans. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
last is the notorious VAG. <laughs> hmm. What do you think she might be? I don't know. I don't even see a party girl on here. I don't see like, hey, hey. I don't see any of that. So I don't know. What is she? That's who she is. She the party girl. She the hey. Let's <laughs> get along. <laughs> Get a mile high club, park after dark, hotel rooftop, whatever goes, flows. <laughs> when it comes to sex, you've been there, done that, and you're not afraid to tell your girlfriends or guy friends all about it. You're adventurous, you're spontaneous, and you're in it to have an orgasmic time. So you stand out a bit because you tend to be the life of the party. People like you, but they're also afraid to be like you. Perhaps sometimes you're a little too loud or maybe you say things that can be embarrassing for a friend every once in a while. Regardless, you're not about to feel ashamed. Of course, there are haters. Some women may be afraid that an ex extrovert like you will steal their partner. You've probably been called a hoe before, but you know it's by someone who doesn't have half as much fun in their whole body as you do in your pinky toe. They can keep their labels, while you're out there living, laughing, and loving it up. But there are precautions and envy needs to take and a ton of education she needs about whatever her life choices are. And that's where this book comes in. There's no particular look for a notorious VAG. She could be tall, short, skinny, voluptuous. Appearance doesn't matter. Her skyrocketing confidence does. And she has more than enough to share with the rest of us. Wow. So, in this book, <laughs> okay. She has you do a test, right? Okay. And this test has about 20 questions on it, multiple choice. And your job is to answer each question honestly and openly within yourself. Okay. And then you're going to score. And that's how you find out which uh, personality you have. Wow. I'm wondering, does she have a website? She might. Hmm. Yeah, because if she has a website, then maybe we can direct the ladies to go to her website because she may have it on the, you know, she may have it on the okay. website. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I'll have to look through the book a little further and see if there is actually a website. I didn't see one in the preface. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't see one in the preface at all. And there could be one in the back, but... I didn't get that far yet. <laughs> right. So if we, so, so we're actually walking through this and learning this together. So um, mm -hmm. we can, we can look, look it up and see. And then if there's not, but then also, you know, um, if there's not, then uh, go pick up a copy of her book. I mean, you know, and, and just Absolutely. to let everybody know, you know, we're not paid sponsors and there's no product placement here. We're actually just bringing this information for educational purposes and sharing what we've learned. And this is a jewel. And as we walk through this, I'm learning as well. So I'm looking at all of these and I'm interested in understanding because I think, I think I'm a split personality. <laughs> and that's what I, I did skim through the book and I did read the first I, before prior to today I did read the introduction and I felt it was pretty interesting and I did read a bit of the first chapter and I was in initially like whoa it captivated me and grabbed me and that's why I did purchase the book because I said I can learn a lot from this book um, and then I have a daughter who I also didn't I just wanted her to feel comfortable enough to know that mom has resources in the house that she can look at and she can learn from, as well as my sons, in case they had questions and didn't feel comfortable enough to come to me. So there is something here tangible that they can pick up and read and learn about their own anatomy, their personalities and things of that nature. And, and for my sons, the anatomy and personality of the women that they plan to involve themselves with later on in life or don't even plan to for that fact of the matter. Absolutely. how life happens, right? Right, absolutely. And I'm so impressed looking over your shoulder at your library. I am just such a, a book connoisseur, if you will. I love to read and I love books. I know we have audio capabilities now. 
and you know mm-hmm. and all of that but to me there's nothing like holding a book in your hand reading the book Absolutely. being able to highlight it and like I said before you know when I read my books I read my books you know we have highlighter so you know my I guess in as a part of my legacy it'll be my book collection because it can't go anywhere you can't sell them or anything because they're all written right. in highlighted and you know bits right. and pieces of my life are in those books so yeah right. so this is this is really interesting and I'm, I'm just wondering with the ladies that are going I just wonder what our feedback is going to be today on the personality <laughs> types because the wonderful <laughs> thing about being on this side is I get to hear all of the feedback and sometimes people are not you know we're asking for you all to comment sometimes people are not and I guess on our topics you know they're not really comfortable with actually putting it in the comment or it being identified mm-hmm. to them but they will call me so I'm going to ask their permission to start, you know, incorporating some of their questions because it's just, or their comments are just hilarious. And, and that would be good too, because we need that energy as well during our time, you know, here on on the, the podcast. So I think to have that comment or the questions and things of that nature, because then it helps us to identify where we should be going next, how we should be moving forward. So we'll make sure our audience is being fed. Absolutely. And this is a hint why we decided to, you know, read our way through her book, uh, The Queen Bee by Dr. Jackie Walters is because we had such a wonderful response last week, you know, about, you know, asking more information about the book. And then sometimes people, you know, they don't always want to, like, I love books and, you know, you love books, but sometimes Mm -hmm. folks just feel like they don't have enough time in their day, but they will pop on a podcast and they'll listen. And then sometimes it's the, you know, we don't under, I think something that we have gotten away from is the personal touch and the personal you know yeah. interaction and so I think that's why a lot of the cooking channels and and different channels are really successful because people are they want it they want it they're still inter they feel like they're interacting with other people right when it's a right. video versus right. an audio or versus an audio book or what have you and so many people and you know I know the pandemic now we're working towards you know re integrating into society with everyone but you know people are still sort of you know kind of trying to keep themselves to themselves mm-hmm. and so I think you know bringing this type of information you know it's just I think it's it's a it's a, it's a, bon- it's a benefit absolutely I agree with you it is a benefit so is there anything else you'd like to share in regards yeah, to the is. uh how, I didn't hear you finish, we didn't finish the introduction Oh, go ahead. No, I'm, 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 go ahead. I'm in. I got my pen and my paper and everything. I'm ready. <laughs> so, but she did say, because she did goes into talking about the five questions about your vaginal personality. She does okay. say that you have to be very honest with yourself, right? About who you are and what type of person you are. And when you're answering the questions to learn more about your vaginal personality, that's going to be the most important part is being honest. She does say that you can be a combination of one or two or maybe all three or all five of them. So you don't have to be necessarily one. You could be a Virgin Mary and be like, you know what? I just want to live the life of a notorious VAG for a little bit. And you can definitely do that. That's your choice. That's your, that's up to you in deciding what, what you need at that time. But over your lifetime, more than likely, you're probably going to experience more than one of these personalities over your lifetime as a woman. Yeah, because I'm looking at these and, you know, I'm thinking I I can identify with all of them. Um, What was number two? Number two was the sanctified snatch. (laughs) I can identify with all of them. The only one I can't really identify with is the Coochichondriac. That's the only one I with. And you know what? If you think back over your life, you probably might be able to find a Coochichondriac somebody somewhere up in there too, Doc. To be oh honest. yeah, I found some. Oh for sure. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sometimes. Yes, we yes. Talk about how our values and our experiences shape that personality. So depending okay. on what was going on in your life at that time, depending on who was in your life at that time, you know, those definitely, those experiences are definitely going to shape the type of personality, your vaginal personality at that time. So and the who, that's um, a good point. No, that's a good point to bring it out because 
the who, you know, right. because, you know, as, as ladies, you know, oftentimes we've been taught to, um, I know submit is part of what we've been taught, but to, you know, not be so uh, notorious VAG, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> right, we've been right. taught, you yeah, know, been taught. And, right. and, the, and the funny thing is that when you're taught not to be the VAG, when you get out on your own, you want to experience the VAG. Oh, you know? right. <laughs> the VAG. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, so, so the, the, did she, did she give any more information about the split personality? She just basically said, if you find yourself wanting to have other experiences with the different personalities to not be afraid to figure out ways to get out there and enjoy your life, which might include um, exercising more, changing the type of lifestyle that you have, um, not being afraid to meditate. We said that earlier. Because what happens when we meditate, your body will follow your mind. So your mind is a command center. Your brain is the command center of your body. So if you're meditating on certain things, then your body's going to pretty much follow suit. Mm -hmm. And your crowds. Don't be afraid to um, get out and meet different women who have different personalities because they're going to help bring out different characteristics in your personality. That's Talk true. About opening your eyes a little bit is what she says. Mm -hmm. Explore books, explore movies that are going to um, encourage you to broaden your horizons with your creative side. So those books and those movies are going to give you ideas. I know sometimes we shy away from pornography and things of that nature, but when we're reading those books, those Elian Harris books, or watching those movies, those it's, it's a softer side of porn. It's, mm -hmm. it's just softer. Mm -hmm. right. So it says, she says, get out of town, go travel, go to different places that you've never been to and go by yourself. Because when you're around other people that don't know you, your personality might change a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, right that's a that's a good point out of the place where you and, and sometimes it's a freeing experience I know I love to travel so when I go to different places I love to figure out different you know like figure out where the story is and like after you've been a couple of times then you kind of know the different routes or whatever but I don't know why that's always been just a that's a fun part of a trip for me is trying to find different places like oh wait a minute there's that you know whatever the store is in your town or there's that store or wait a minute okay that, that was a good food place we got to come back here before we leave you know so mm -hmm. just you know or a good restaurant or something like that so I, I can understand that where a lot of times when you do go on vacation or you're out of your own surrounding area right. you do feel more comfortable and more relaxed to be yourself Right. And sometimes even when you're not comfortable in a bathing suit, you'll do a bathing suit outside of your area. <laughs> yeah, that is true. You're like, they don't know me. They're not going to see me no more after this. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, hey, so that right. is a good, that is a good point. And we mm -hmm. do, and we do the people that are around us is so important. The people that right. are in our circle. And like you said, the, the, the females, the women that we actually, you know, uh, come in relationship with. So that's really good. Right. I like that. True. Two more two more is what she, she, she gives two more suggestions okay. learn how to play the part so don't be afraid to try new sexual positions um open up to your ob basically learn how to communicate and don't be afraid to allow yourself to open up and try some new things last is find a therapist and talk with them talk with them about what traumas you've been through in life and how relationships have hurt you so that you can learn and grow from that and heal from those experiences so that you can have healthier more fulfilling experiences later on in life so yeah I think that that last point I've been emphasizing that over the whole you know over all of our our segments is you know mm -hmm. when you experience brokenness and things that you know that hurt you even some things we don't know hurt us until we're able to talk with a a good therapist and right. and you know, when you're able to do that, then you're able to have, you're, you're out of your own frame of reference on how to handle and deal with situations. And there's no shame in not knowing how to handle certain situations. It's okay to reach out for help. 
you know, I always say this example, when you, you know, when you have a trauma to your body, like you break your arm or your leg or something, you go straight to the doctors for that. But when something Mm -hmm. happens where it's mentally broken or mentally disconnected, we have such a problem. Um, There's a stigmatism associated with going to get um, help with anything mental. And I just, you know, that's part of why I voice it because I think it's so, you know, my daughter was on the episode, she's my co-host on on the generational um, health episodes and segments. And she talked about how she went through therapy and it helped her to heal from the brokenness of her father not being around because we were divorced Mm -hmm. when she was very young. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, and he didn't take part in her life. And she openly talked about how Mm -hmm. therapy really helped her. And I was so happy that she was able to to do that. And she said there were some things that she didn't even recognize that were hindering her and holding her back. Mm -hmm. So we talk. Mm -hmm. I I, I know that firsthand. I see people in my office on a continual basis with trauma and trying to work through and process trauma and people don't even recognize, especially women. Sometimes we don't recognize that we've actually been through trauma to begin to even heal from it. So yeah, and then then you can get into a you can get into a a, a snowball effect or like on a on a on a wheel where you're going from you know relationship to relationship to relationship yeah. and never yeah. healing that that brokenness and then so right. you wonder why the relationships fail because you're bringing all that old baggage to that person which I have often said is unfair you know and personally I took four years out of the dating world because I wanted to work through and make sure that I was bringing my full completely you know well self or as best as I could to the next relationship and you know it's actually been a very very healing peaceful place and mm-hmm. that's where I learned to meditate. That's where mm-hmm. I learned to, you know, to be okay with myself, you know, and to love on myself, you know, right. and to feel again. There's right. some things that we don't even realize that we've shut down until we're in a relationship and the relationship is going bad. And, you know, we don't know why it's going bad. Well, well, one, did we even learn our, um, what is right. it? Our VP. Our <laughs> VP. How we expect him to learn it if we right. didn't know. If we if don't know, know it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. And that's what I like about the book so far. So I really appreciate this from her, this publication from her. It's just, it's been so far pretty interesting. Well, all right. We're going to keep yeah. on work, uh, reading our way through. Uh, through this amazing book and being able to share this information with everyone and uh, you know we're just gonna keep on keep on keep on going and getting better and better and they keep saying you're gonna keep getting gooder and gooder and gooder yes Yes. (laughs) so now did you have any final thoughts for our people today no I think what I took from our little, our section that we just read through the introduction of the book is to learn who you are. Don't be afraid to explore yourself before you give other people the opportunity to explore you because you can't even begin this. What's that old adage that we have? How can you tell somebody else or how can you show somebody else how to treat you if you yourself don't even know how to treat yourself? So care about yourself, love on yourself, get to know yourself. Don't be afraid of who you are and own it. Own it. it. That's own so it. good. That's, that's so good. That we, 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 what did, uh, um, is it Pastor TD Jakes? He said, drop the mic and pick it back up. I think he has a book out now. He said, pick it back up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can drop the mic right there and pick it back up with that because, um, because you're right. Just, just learn how, I think for me, it's learning how to walk in my truth and mm-hmm. learning to thyself be true yes you know and, and yes. getting rid of any guilt about taking care of yourself Absolutely. you know right so i think right. that's that's where that's where i'm going to leave it today to thyself be true to thyself be true i like that See? To thyself be true. Yeah. To thyself be true. Well, all right, everybody. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe and stay fearless. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Okay.